Hi, doing a quick video on the second derivative test. So here we go. Second deri derivative. Let's recall the first derivative, however. And let's see what we got from the first derivative. Recall, if we set f prime of x equal to 0, we will get critical x values. Now, those critical x values are ways for us to find a maximum or a minimum point, depending on uh, what the number line test or the first derivative test reveals. So what we do is we plug in that critical value of c into our function, and that will reveal a maximum or minimum point to some degree. Now, sometimes when a point is higher on the x-axis than lower, uh, or on the y-axis than lower on the x-axis or y-axis, we feel like maybe that might be a, a max or a min. We can typically judge these things by our knowledge of the general functions and how they look. However, it's always good to test your theory. So what we do is we use, uh, we test those critical values on a number line. And if we have some c value, then that is supposed to provide us a maximum or a minimum, then what we do is we test points on either side within an interval. And we say, well, if f prime of x, of x sub 1 is greater than 0, then it's increasing. So if it's a positive number, if I put this c value, um, if I put x value back into f prime of x and x sub 2 back into f prime of x, then they're going to reveal something. And so what happens is if we see f prime of x sub 2 is less than 0, then we say that's decreasing. So we draw the, an arrow plus and minus, and that way we know that we're going up to the c value and then going down from the c value. And that would show that it's a maximum. Now we can have the opposite situation be true too, where maybe we have f prime of x is less than 0, and maybe this is x sub 2 and this is x sub 1. So if it's less than 0, so we're coming into it and then we're increasing going out, that means we've created a minimum. All right. So that's what the first derivative test is all about, testing those intervals on either side of that c value. All right, so what does second derivative test show us? Well, it's a, just a simpler way of doing that. You know, the higher you get in math, you realize the easier they, they make things for us. So they came up with a second derivative test, so we don't have to do that number line business anymore. Well, what we can do, basically, is we find a point of inflection, first of all, where f double prime of x is 0. And that's where concavity starts to change. And it goes from either uh, concave down or and concave up. So when is it switching? When is it changing? Kind of like a roller coaster goes up, and then it starts to go down. But then all of a sudden, there's a point on there where it starts to change and curve back up. At that point, there is a, a point there where the concavity starts to change, or it goes from this slope to a less slope and goes around. So. We get that by setting f double prime equal to 0. And we can get a point of inflection if we plug that x value back into the original function. Now, if f double prime of c, this is the same c that you got from your first derivative, and you plug this c now into the second derivative, and if it turns out positive, then you have concave up. If it turns out negative, if f prime of c turns out negative, then you're concave down. Now, the way I remember this is just like parabolas, right? If, if it's uh, greater than 0, it's pointing up, the parabola is up. And if it's negative, it's pointing down like a negative parabola going down. So just a simple way to remember that. And this, again, proves the sign chart. All right, let's take a look at an example of what we're actually doing here. So we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 9x squared plus 24x minus 18. Question says, show all maximum, minimum, and points of inflection to sketch the curve. All right, so first we want to find f prime of x to find the critical values, critical points. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. We bring the 3 down. We reduce the power. 9 is 18x and 24, and the constant goes away. So we have 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. I hope you can see that with the green. 
Step two, set f prime of x equal to zero. We factor out a three. We get two critical values of x equal four and x equal two after simplifying and then factoring of x squared minus 6x plus 8 is x minus 4 and x minus 2. So 2 and 4 are our x values. If we plug those back into the function, f of 2, if we go through that process, we will get a y value of 2. And f of 4, if we plug that in, we will get a y value of negative 2. All right, so what does the graph start to look like? So step three would be to find your double prime. F double prime of x is equal to 6x minus 18. If we set that equal to zero, then we know we've got at x equal 3, we've got a point of inflection. So now what we need to do is we figure out, well, where is the y value for 3? So we plug that back in. And at 3, we'll actually know that it's uh, 0, the y value is 0. So we start to think, well, what does this graph look like? Well, we know at 2, comma 2, there's a maximum point. And at 4, comma negative 2, we have a relative minimum. So we have a relative max and a relative min. And we have our point of inflection at 3, comma 0. Well, let's just make sure... One way we can double check and make sure that our concavity is correct or that we have the correct max and the correct min is through our second derivative test. So what we do is we take f double prime of 2 and we put in 2 here. That's 12 minus 18 is a negative value. So that means it's concave down. If we put in 4, we'll get 4 is 24 minus 18 or a positive value. And that means we are concave up. And so you can see highlighted here in pink that we are concave up and concave down. So yes, at 2, since it's concave down, we have proven that we do have a relative max. And at 4, we have a relative min because it's concave up. All right. Well, I hope that helps. That's the second derivative test. Enjoy. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. Talk to you soon.